Well, I think I discovered that doing my drugs is not your typical music documentary. Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I am Chris Gore. I, I hope I hope you're doing well today, in spite of, you know, everything. I feel like I say that some form of that every time because who knows what is going on in our world. It is a crazy, weird world at this moment, but um, I'm lucky that I get a break because I get to talk to filmmakers like Tyler Q. Rosen from Michigan is joining us on the Film Threat Podcast, and his documentary, Doing My Drugs, is about Danish pop star Thomas Muchimba Butenschen, and I'm sure I uh, did a terrible pronunciation on that name, so please correct me, but but Tyler, this is not a typical music documentary. I mean, this is a story about Thomas's life. Um, he was born with HIV. Um, his parents both died from HIV when he was young, and yet he persevered and became a well-known Danish pop star. But the story even um, takes a, a bigger turn from there. I, I need to know, first of all, how you discover Thomas. Uh, you know, Thomas and I met on a uh, small island in Indonesia, actually. He had just been outed by the uh, Danish press. You know, it was on the eve of his second album coming out, and he was all bent out of shape, and he was down in Indonesia getting away from everybody. I was down there diving. So he and I became fast friends and then started collaborating almost immediately. So you met, you met him diving like on a vacation. You're just like, yeah. Yeah, I met this dude, and we we just sort of bonded. Just Pretty like, much. That. Cool. yeah, exactly. So when you gained his trust and really like got his personal story, it's um, incredibly remarkable. I mean, I gave the you know the the bullet point version, but right. can you tell us in more detail? This is a guy that you know lost his parents at a young age, really suffered. Um, in his upbringing and then just became this incredible musical talent. Yeah, he, he has a pretty extraordinary story. He was, you know, very unlucky. Some would say he was born HIV positive. He got real sick when he was two or three months old. He has a, a white Danish father and a black Zambian mother. And, um, you know, they, they didn't know what it was because it was 1985 and they weren't sick. And they thought, okay, maybe he has malaria. Well, let's take him back to Denmark and see uh, what's going on here. And then that's when he was diagnosed with HIV. Then they realized, well, how does this baby have it? Uh, must be the parents and both of his parents had it as well. So from there, he, he lost his dad when he was eight. He lost his mom when he was nine. And then they, uh, he, he became an orphan. And he was raised by friends of Thomas's father. And... Through that, he was uh, he was brought up really well by them. And before his dad passed, he, he was really working hard to make sure uh, Thomas wasn't living in a stigmatized state. And Thomas, you know, grew up in a loving home and then found music and became this uh, Danish pop star. And the, the most phenomenal part of Thomas's story is that now he is well medicated and he has two children. And, you know, he made his children the natural way because when you're well medicated on ARVs, the antiretroviral drugs, it's impossible to pass this on. And a lot of people don't realize that. And certainly in his motherland of Zambia, they don't know this at all. So Thomas is now using his platform and using his voice as a, as a way to uh, help teach his, his fellow brethren down in Zambia. Well, I mean, it used to be that um, being diagnosed as HIV positive was considered a death sentence. And now, of course, um, thanks to science and and uh, uh, great people in the medical field, you know, yeah. it's not. It's a treatable, um, just to say, maybe diabetes, right? I mean, that's the way it's been described to me. Um, so, uh, I mean, that's, that's I, you know, I guess that gives us hope for our current situation, right? Uh, we'll get past oh. that. Um, I, I want to hear a little bit more about his musical talent. Um, it, and it's covered in the documentary. Uh, we right. see here is music. We see performances. Um, that's sort of the entryway in is like, hey, like this amazing musician that you didn't know about. And then here's his personal story is right. um, many would say tragedy, but, you know, he turned it into inspiration. Can you tell yeah. me about the development as an as an artist? Yeah, well, you know, 
he has flipped it. And to him, it's not a tragedy. I mean, of course he lost his parents, but uh, Thomas is like this uh, shining light, this beacon of hope, especially in a, in a land, in a, in a country where uh, it's running rampant. You know, I think the, uh, the official stats are maybe 13% infection rate in Zambia. But, it, but our friends down there tell us it's higher, much higher, maybe 18%, maybe one in five people have HIV or AIDS, and a lot of them are dying. And, you know, our friend St. Michael, another one of the musicians, because speaking of the music, Thomas, you know, collaborates with a lot of uh, Zambian musicians. And St. Michael told us, he said, you go to funerals every other day, but nobody's dying from AIDS. It's all uh, liver complications, kidney failure, stuff like that. So uh, it's very stigmatized. But, yeah, Thomas is, Thomas is talented. He's, he's, a, he's, he's amazing. And, and that's why I fell in love with him in the beginning is because – well, one, he's a great guy, but his his he's a he just will pick up the guitar. He's always got it with him. Starts strumming a little ditty. He starts singing, sings about what's happening, and he's really uh, uh he's got a lot of charisma. So I think people are listening to him. I, I certainly did, and that's why I joined him in this fight. Well, it's 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 interesting. Um, the thing that struck me about him, and you should go see right now, if you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this, you can go to YouTube. Um, check out the trailer for Doing My Drugs. Um, it, it's what, what struck me about Thomas right off the bat was that hair. And then <laughs> <laughs> that hair is very striking. It's right? got, you know, easy to easy to spot him in a crowd. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, also just his positivity. I right. mean, um, right. You know, I, 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 they say that a lot of a great art comes from pain. And so clearly, you know, to go through what he went through as a child and to emerge from that, this beacon of positivity is right. has to be a source of inspiration, whether you know his personal story or not. Just like, he, you know, the, the way he just sort of seems to look at life um, uh in a way, I mean, he recognizes, and maybe that's something that I ha I did not have that kind of upbringing, uh, right. you know, not close to those kinds of struggles. But it makes you appreciate life all the more. Is that is yeah. that what you found just in hanging around him? Because it just seemed like he would light up a room no matter where he went. He certainly does. He he lights up a room, he, and as you're saying, that hair is ridiculous. I think it's maybe like this big, <laughs> but uh, he he uh, he he was fortunate, you know. He, he says in the film, had I stayed in Zambia, I'd be gone. He'd be dead. He, you know, so very few Zambians who are born HIV positive in the 80s, they're not around anymore. They, they didn't make it. And Thomas knows that. And he knows how lucky he was. He was fortunate. He was taken to Europe. And that's what I love about this story is Thomas is white. He's black. He's African. He's European. He, he, he bridges the gap. He, he, He's the glue that binds, and, and, and he's going back to try and uh, tell those who are less fortunate and, and weren't lucky enough to be shipped out as a baby to, to Europe and get these European drugs. Now he's going back. He, he, he wrote an entire album. That's why our film's called Doing My Drugs. He, he, when he and I were filming, he, songs just started pouring out of him because originally we were just making a music documentary. And then it became apparent to me and not him so much, but you could see it pouring out of him in the music. He just started writing these songs and they were pouring out of him. And I was just like trying to hide in the corner and not say much and make sure I was capturing these amazing moments. And uh, one of the songs that came out was called doing my drugs. And he, uh, he, you know, there's a, there's a literacy problem too. Sometimes I think some people less fortunate aren't, aren't reading or, Whatever the, the, the reasons are, people aren't getting the message. They haven't been getting the message in the last 30 years, right? The, the, the rates are out of control and unacceptable. And Thomas knows he, he had that upbringing and, and that the, the lucky vibe, or not vibe, but like he was, he was lucky to make it. So he, now he's using his music to help save more lives. Yeah, it, it's it's um, amazing that he just took it on like beyond his musical career to say, okay, now I want to have an effect. I want to I I, I want to see go back home to Zambia and and see what sort of positive impact um, that I can make. What has been the result of that? I mean, you followed him around for right. uh, for some time because you see him in a lot of situations. I don't know I don't know how long the production was. I mean, for your doc, but. Um, give us a little insight into, you know, 
where you sat and 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 you know following him on this journey? Well, we it took us it took me seven years to make this film. We shot for about three years, and over the course of that, I became an activist too. You know, he he wasn't an activist in the beginning. He was just a musician. I was just a filmmaker. And what happened is over time, we both became galvanized by what was happening down there. And together, he and I started his uh, nonprofit, the Muchimba Music Foundation. And what we started to do is we start we we said, oh, you know, how can we how can we help here? And Thomas said, let's do a test for ticket. So uh, we started um, putting together concerts with all of our our favorite Zambian musicians and friends doing a one day festival like a Lollapalooza almost uh, where there's no entrance fee. You just take a test. And we had a uh, three or four week testing campaign in Lusaka, Zambia. And we, you know, got together a big coalition of foundations and others who provided uh, patient care treatment programs. And if you took a test for HIV or AIDS, you, get to go to the concert for free in three or four weeks. And to a lot of people, that's a big deal because they can't afford to go to shows. So we ended up testing tens of thousands of people over a few years, and we still run the program today. We're trying to get uh, more funding and support so we can throw on more concerts. But um, yeah, and to answer the first part of your question about Thomas um, becoming that activist, I think the, the day that he decided he wanted to start telling the story was really when his, when he had children because he wants them to grow up in a better world, you know? Wow. That's uh that's amazing. Where can people go to get more information about your film? Uh, you can go to doing You can go to muchimba.org. You can go to earthlike sounds.com. We have a soundtrack album as well. And um, check it out. I'm really proud of this film. I think it's a, I think it's a rock doc above all else. It's cool, and Thomas is cool. The music's good, and it's a good cause. And I, I hope it catches fire. And I hope that uh, those in Zambia, we really made this film for the Zambians. I really hope it, it helps down there. Great, uh, Tyler. Thank you so much for joining us on the Film Threat Podcast. Uh, thank really you. pleasure, pleasure to talk to you, another fellow fellow Detroiter, Michigander. Uh, who has become a filmmaker. Uh, I meet more and more. We call it the Michigan Mafia. There's a, there's nice. a lot Sign of people. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Take care. Okay, doctor. Thank you.